And we're back, Stripe Show Podcast, on a Thursday. I'm Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Going to have some fun today, Instruction Thursday. Today is all about Operation Baby Draw, a training program that I put together during, um, during COVID. And, of course, uh, online training programs really took off online lessons. Uh, during the pandemic, I guess it was a bit of a silver lining, if you will, um, in the game of golf, and it was something that we could continue to do. But I think really online instruction really kind of got its footing uh, during that time. And I always thought that, look, not everybody is going to take a lesson uh, in person. Not everybody's going to take an online lesson where they got a video of their swing and send it where it's more of that one on one experience. In fact, I think the majority would rather consume instruction a different way. In fact, like 80 to 85% um, of the golfing population is consuming instruction in a different way. Whether it's reading magazines, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's uh, you know signing up for a subscription with a particular teacher. And so I put these training programs together that did really, really well, and they continue to do well. They're on my website, travisfoltongolf.com. The most popular is Operation Baby Draw. And I think it's the most popular because the majority of golfers need to learn how to hit a draw at some point. I believe that. I think when you get into the game, most of the errors that you have really work towards missing the ball to the right for a right-handed player whether it's the face, the club face staying too open um, or the path working too much across your body out to in or you're too steep coming down, you know, whatever the case may be, it, it tends to lead to the ball going to the right too much. And so Operation Baby Draw, I, I think, starts to address a lot of these issues starts to address the club face, starts to address the path, starts to address the attack angle, starts to address the conversation of how things kind of work through the back from a wedge to the seven, and then in particularly the driver and how that can change and, and, and the adjustments that you need to make with the driver in order to hit a baby draw. But the reality is, is as you get people to go down this path, in this program, they they really start cleaning up so many things, so many errors that I've seen for 20 plus years. And so, so often as they go through this, they learn how to hit a draw. Sometimes they overdraw it, but through that process, they start hitting a, a higher quality shot. They start getting more distance. Um, and they they really start, I think, elevating the ceiling to develop more skill. So I want to go through a few of the things. I'm not going to talk about all 10 videos, but there are 10 videos and they're very thorough. And I'll just quickly list the videos and you watch them in order, right? And you don't have to, to watch them. You don't have to watch them like all at the same time, but it's like taking an online course. So the first one is um, it talks about the grip. Video two, posture and alignment. Video three, ball position. Video four, club face angle. Video five, lead arm depth slash hand path. Video six, backswing pivot. Video seven, shallowing it out on the downswing. Video eight, downswing pivot. Video nine, impact. Video 10, driver. So I want to touch on, I think, a few of the things that as you listen to this, the goal is to give you some things to consider if you're someone who, man, I, I'd like to learn how to draw it. If you, if you really want to learn how to draw it and you want to go through the entire program, spend the 20 bucks on travisfoltongolf.com. It, it'll be a great investment for you and you can watch it at your pace, step by step. But in this, in this podcast, I'm going to give you some of, I think, the pitfalls that happen where all of a sudden we start cutting it. We start losing distance. And I want to start with the grip, okay? Just, just real quick with the grip. 
for a right-handed player, if the more you move your hands to the right on the grip, we call that a stronger grip, right? So it's like taking your left hand and turning it to your right, and the left thumb would get more down the right-hand side of the grip. I'm a fan of the left thumb being a little to the right of center, and I'm also a fan of a short thumb, pinching your thumb short. I think that helps position it in the right part of the left hand. I think that helps solidify the club face. But the rule of thumb is the more you move your hands to the right, the more the club face will close, right? And so sometimes in fixing the club face, it can be easy as just making the grip a little bit stronger, moving both hands to your right. Now, I'm not a fan of just taking both hands and cranking them way over to the right and going mega strong. I'm more of a fan of kind of managing the grip along with the wrist angles, which I'll talk about here in a second in the backswing and the downswing to get the club face in position to draw it. Now, I think generally speaking, when you're trying to get someone to hit a baby draw, you're trying to get the club face to be a little bit more closed. You're trying to get the club face to be more closed. Yes, at impact, but I think oftentimes the result of impact comes from what's happening before it. And oftentimes it can be as simple as just making the grip stronger to the right. So look at your lead hand grip. Make sure that it's kind of over to the right. If your thumb is down the middle, well, that can be a pretty weak grip. That can get the face a bit open. Okay, so you might consider just moving it slightly to the right. Or you might consider moving it, you know, even more to the right and going a bit stronger and then the right hand matching up to it. The right hand, you know, sitting on the same angle. So it starts with the grip. Ball position has relevance too. Ball position, again, rule of thumb, the more you play the ball forward, the more you're going to swing a little bit out to in. And so oftentimes when you're when you're teaching someone to draw, you you don't want to air forward in the stance. You're going to maybe air a little back normally with the handle leaning forward at address. Now, for a seven iron, I like the ball position to be one ball forward of center. A five iron may be, you know, ball and a half. Hybrids, two balls forward. Keep the wedges in the middle of the stance. We'll get to the driver here at the end. But... Let's not let's not air forward, okay? Let's be conservative with the ball position, lean the handle a little forward. And then also, I think from an alignment perspective, let's not be open. Let's feel maybe the body slightly closed to the right. I will say that as you get into the longer clubs and the ball position goes more forward, that I, I think there's more of an emphasis on keeping the shoulders a little more close to the right, okay? And, you know, turning the, the chest a little and, and feeling a little closed. Club face looking at the target, body line may be slightly close to that. These are things that you're going to consider to, to kind of influence more of a draw. And so we've got the grip, we've got ball position, we got alignment, and now I think with that grip, we've got to match it up to the wrist angles going back. I think when you take it back, a couple of things that I would look at. One is when you take it halfway back and the club shaft is parallel to the ground, look at the toe of the club. Is the toe pointing up to 12 o'clock or is it pointing slightly down to 1 o'clock? The angle of the face should kind of match up a little bit more to the spine. Don't over-rotate the face. Don't over-rotate the face open, toe up, or, or toe pointing at 1 o'clock. I'm a fan of keeping the toe a little bit more down. Now, as you continue to go and you give it the full wrist hinge, if you were looking at it from down the line, I, I like to see some of the club face. I don't like to see the club face disappear. And, and so often, for those that get into... Uh, fading the ball too much and, and want to draw it more. So often, the club face opens up at some point. It, it opens up either halfway back or it opens up at the top where the left wrist starts to get into too much extension, too much cup. 
Okay. Now, if you're someone who has a lot of extension at the left wrist, you know, that cupping left wrist, and the grip is weak to neutral, that club face is going to be too open. That toe is going to hang too much pointing down to the ground. You're not going to see the club face from looking down the line. If you follow me, you, 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 you understand that, um, you know, I talk a lot about that club face and what it looks like at the top. And so with that weak, that weak to neutral left-hand grip, you, you, you probably need to take on more flexion in that lead wrist, flatten it out a little bit, and that'll get the face looking more back towards the camera. Now, I think if you went, you know, if that left hand was neutral to maybe slightly strong, then you could take on a little bit more extension in the lead wrist, right? And so it's, it's you know, your left wrist is flexible. It has a lot of range of motion. But I think at the end of the day, what you want to see halfway back, toe slightly down, 11 o'clock, and then at the top, you want to see the angle of that club face running pretty parallel to the lead arm or the club face kind of turned up to the sky a little bit, where when you look at it from down the line, you can see the face. And I spend hours and hours and hours and hours in lessons every week doing exactly that, getting the club face to be more closed in the backswing. Okay? It's not about just being closed at impact, I think, in the development of this. It's about getting the club face more prepared, more closed earlier. And oftentimes it's in the backswing. All right. And so there's the club face. Now I will tell you in managing the, the path of the club going back and how the club is moving, going back has relevance too. If I've seen one inside takeaway, I've seen, I don't know, 10 million. I just fixed another one today. It's ironic. Actually, this morning, this young man came in. I've been working with him, and he's been playing great. But he's been hitting all of a sudden. He's hitting too many cuts. All of a sudden, he's like, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm hitting these weak, like, glancing blows, and it's just cutting. His issue wasn't so much of the club face. It was more of how he was shaping the swing plane. And so in the first move, again, halfway back, the club head got way inside behind his hands. And so he sucked the club head way in, then around him. And so from there, the only place he could go was back over the top. And I see that so many times. The club face looked pretty good. But he was so far inside that he had to come over it. There was no room to shallow the club, to, to get the club back down underneath from the inside. And so what did we work on? Well, we worked on halfway back. He felt like his, you know, the, the hands were kind of over his right toe and the club head was a little bit, it felt like the club head was a little bit more out in front of his hands. Club face again, toe slightly down. And then from there, he made his nice full turn. And then from there, he could shallow it out and drop it back from the inside. So my point is with the club is I don't like that excessive inside takeaway. Can you get away with it? Yes, you can. In fact, it's actually a pretty decent little fade bias move, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it for even that. That's another program, Operation Drip Fade, TravisFoltonGolf.com. But I'm a fan of making room on the downswing where you get the club head out and you get, you know, you get some width and you get the club head out in front of you. Then you make that nice full turn in the right hip. And then you've got room to drop it back down underneath. And I, and I think, this kind of leads me into the turn, which it's its own video, by the way. Backswing pivot, video six. Huge, huge video. And this backswing pivot of turning the right hip and letting the spine extend a little bit and getting some full range and depth behind you, letting the hand path come in and around. I think is fully incentivized when you get things structured more halfway back. It, I don't think it's a coincidence that when you look at the best players in the world, like so many of them, what do they do? They work on the first move. They're like halfway back, halfway back. And how many of them do you see the club head get behind the hands when they're rehearsing that? Zero. Maybe Ricky Fowler when he came out of college. What they're rehearsing is hand path working kind of in club head, staying, you know, in line with the lead arm or a little out in front. 
me say that again. Hand path working in with the turn. Club head maybe a little out in front of the hands. Got the face square. Toe slightly down. And now from there, fully turn it. Think about it. If you take the club head in behind the hands too early, like, it, and then you fully turn, it's so far wrapped around you like my student this morning. Where are you going to go from there? You can't, you can't bring it down from the inside. You'll hit three feet behind it. So you've got to come down steeper. You've got to come down more over it. So I like to make room. I like to get it out. You know, I like the hand path in. I like to cut it out in front. I like getting that, incentivizing that full turn in the right hip, lose some flexion in that right knee, let the lead arm work around with some depth. Now you got room to shallow. And if I've given that lesson one time, I've given it a hundred, I mean, 10 million times. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how, you know, club face, pre getting the swing shape properly organized in the backswing, maximizing that turn. And then from there, in the change of direction, now the club wants to shallow. And in shallowing, okay, and in shallowing, it's, it's, it's the, the, the weight of the club, the club head pitching back behind you. Shallowing is not like pulling your arms down. I think sometimes, I think sometimes in in teaching, particularly in online lessons, you'll you'll see players look. I'm gonna I'm gonna shallow. I'm gonna shift my weight left. My lower body is gonna shift left, but I'm gonna. But you can see them pulling their arms down behind them, and as they kind of pull their arms down, you can still see the shaft wants to get tippy. It wants to get vertical. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll get them to go up there, leave their hands up there, and I'll get them to feel like, you know, the right elbow is kind of pinching in towards the left. And then as that right elbow pinches in towards the left, that left wrist kind of takes on some flexion. They start, they start, to, they start to identify that the club shaft, as my hands are up there, kind of lays down. And so I'll just kind of get them to isolate that. And, and feel the right elbow pinch, external rotation in the right shoulder, feel some flexion in the lead wrist. Then that shaft lays down a little bit. And then we start to get that concept going with some weight shift, which then kind of obviously leads into some rotation. But I am not a fan in teaching Operation Baby Draw with the shaft pitching towards vertical. I'm not a fan of getting that shaft steep. You can still draw it from there. And as they go steep, and then if they, they want to draw it, what they do is then they kind of stand the handle up and the, and the spine falls back excessively in right bend. And so you can still draw it that way because by getting that handle to pull up, it will move the path out to the right. But the, the point of contact can live on the toe, and man, that one's a more difficult one to unravel. So what I would rather have you do is get the shaft to pitch back. Now it's shallower. The club head's behind you. Now that's going to kind of facilitate and open up the idea of rotating. The handle is going to come into a more appropriate height. And now you can kind of manage that, that side bend. And that side bend, you know, look, you, you got to have a little side bend, right? You, you've got to have the spine tilted a little right at a dress. And then when you hit it, it's got to have a little side bend at impact. And, and I think as we kind of move the conversation down to downswing and impact, what I'll see as some pitfalls is from the top, I will see that steeper nature, right? That vertical nature of the shaft. So often though, it's a byproduct of what happened in the backswing. Club face maybe got too open. Club got too far in behind you. Club shaft got too shallow around you. And so you clean those things up now that, okay, well, now it makes sense for the shaft to shallow. Now the club face is more close. Now it makes sense for the club to shallow. And so I see, um, I see that. I also see on the downswing, not enough weight shift. You know, we, we need the lower body to shift left. I think the idea of the, of the upper center you know, kind of centering itself on that lower center. Yes, that 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 makes sense. I think in the early stages of drawing it, you might let that go a little bit. You you might let a player feel the right shoulder kind of work down and, and take on a bit of early side bend to, to help facilitate that club working back from the inside for the first time for a higher handicap. 
I think as that progression goes along, you 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 start to kind of center up that upper center to lower center a little bit, and then that side bend just kind of gradually um, evolves as the weight continues to move left. But I think in the end of the day, like I, I think to the masses, the idea here is that A, you, you've shifted weight left. B, the shaft has shallowed. C, the club face is still prepared. That lead wrist did not pull down into extension. And then from there, you can now turn and hit it. And 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 now as you turn and hit it, and, and the weight's left, and you're rotating your hips, your spines, and a little bit of side bend to the right, you can start to recognize the club shaft is coming from the inside, and that left wrist is going to start turning down. more. The back of that left hand is coming in flatter, it's coming in where now I can kind of turn down and close that face. It's prepared. One of the drills that I like that I talk about, um, and it's one of my favorite drills as we kind of move along here, is what's called low to high. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you're like most golfers, you blame yourself when you miss a short putt. So after you hold back the urge to throw your putter in the lake, don't do that. You try to fix your putting stroke. But how long does that last? One week, one round, one hole? There's a company called Lab Golf that doesn't think you should be blaming yourself. That's because all putters have this thing called torque, which means the putter face is trying to twist during stroke. So you grip it like a snake. What Lab Golf did is they figure out how to make putters with no torque. They call it lie angle balance. And you have to feel it to believe it. I did. The Lab Golf putter, you don't have to use a funny putting grip to try to keep the face square. You can putt it any way you want because Lab Golf Putter stays perfectly square by itself. It's effortless. To see how much easier putting can be, head over to labgolf.com. So the drill that I like is what we call low to high drill. And so what you would do is you take your setup and you would like take a seven iron and you would set the club head down on the ground. And you would set it down on the ground, like a little bit of a backswing, like two or three feet just to the inside, set it down on the ground, and then drag that club along the ground and then back up to high. So it's a low to high drill. You drag the club head two feet, you know, kind of pre-impact on the ground, set on the ground, and then drag it. It's going to sweep up like to the T and then kind of work back up and around. And as you do that, you're going to feel your lead leg kind of pushing up. You're going to feel your spine extending. And so the club head can kind of work back up and around and it feels very much from in to out. I use the analogy of kind of an overhand in tennis, right? You would get low, the paddle would be low and then you would kind of work up to high. You would meet the ball up high and try to get up on top of it with that face and that racket turning over. And so the low to high drill is really good through impact where if you went the other way, high to low, like now the club head, you would start at like that deliver, like club head would be kind of out in front of you. And then you would come across your body out to in and your spine would stay down in flexion. That would be high to low. I talk about this in video nine through impact. In this video, people really like this video because they – they start to get the idea of, okay, I'm getting the shaft shallowing. I'm getting the weight left. I'm starting to turn. And as I turn, my body is starting to kind of work back up, right? The body is not staying down. I can't tell you how many times, and this is one of the pitfalls. So often through impact, you will see the spine kind of staying down in flexion. Right. And the reality is, is as you're turning and the weight's in the left side, you want that spine to start extending back. Extension is would be this way, where you get that dish in the lower back. And so the body's working into more extension into post impact. And that is really felt through that low to high drill. And I love the analogy of this, of this overhand in tennis. And so now look, the downswing. And impact are starting to materialize, and all of a sudden now we're getting this little push draw. And so now with that push draw, as you've hopefully have started to do with like a seven iron, ball position one forward, 
then you can start taking into the longer clubs. And so the last video, and I'll finish with this, is the driver. Now, here's what happens with the driver, okay? So often, as people go through this program, whether they are, you know, online, uh, wherever they are in the world, or they're in the studio, they'll get to a point where like, man, I'm, I'm hitting my iron so good. I'm drawing it. But, I, but when I go to my driver, I'm still fading it. And so the pitfall with the driver is that ball position, it gets it gets so far forward in the stance, right? It's kind of, let's say it's up on that left heel, left shoulder area. Feet are wide, we're further from it. But with that ball forward, what we tend to do is turn and face it. We tend to take our chest and turn and face that forward ball position. And so what we need to do is we need to make sure that the spine is tilted to the right a little. Maybe even add a little more weight to the right foot, but turn your chest and maybe even your belt buckle, turn it to the right. Feel like you're looking more to the right of the ball, right? So the ball's up here and I'm turned over here. I'm looking to the right. I can't tell you how many people need to feel more closed with their woods, in particular their driver, than they did with their irons, okay? Don't be open. Be a little closed when you're learning how to draw it for the first time. And so now you're set up more behind it. Make sure the handle's not forward with the driver. I see that a lot. Get the handle in line or slightly back. And then from there, it's the same swing. Everything is, it's the same action. But what I will tell you is that with the driver, the, the one thing that really helps the driver is the depth. It's the around. And that's why... I get to be such a stickler about that first move and the club head not getting inside because when that happens for the amateur player, they start taking on body faults to accommodate it and they don't get enough depth. They don't kind of maximize their turn and they don't get the hand path and the lead arm around them enough. And so as the club gets longer, they struggle. And so this, this first move and now maximizing this turn, and, and as you start to take that to the driver, you start feeling like, wow, I'm set up more behind it. I can really round this thing out without sucking it way inside early. I can round it out, feel depth, feel more of a merry-go-round versus this Ferris wheel. And now I can bring it back down the same way from the inside, and voila, low to high, there's my draw. So, yes, there's a lot of similarity. There's there's a lot of the same things happening with the driver, but I do think there is some things to be aware of, right? When you're trying to to hit that driver, the one thing we know for sure is that look with the driver, you want the attack angle to be more up, right? Let's just say that your attack angle is one degree up or two degrees up with the driver. Well, that upward attack attack angle the downside to it if you're trying to draw it is it moves the path to the left so you have to offset that by taking your swing direction your a little more to the right and that's where the alignment comes in to help facilitate that swing direction just look at swing direction as this you know kind of swinging down from the inside and maybe you know a little more out towards right field and you know, all these things that are starting to happen because of, of the improvement that you're making and the things that we're talking about. But with the seven iron, if you hit three or four degrees down, look, that's that's helping the path move a little more to the right. So in theory, it's a little easier to, to draw it when you're hitting down on it, right? And that's why it's, you'll see players go to the three wood versus the driver when they want to draw it because they want to use that attack angle to help slinging around the corner so just food for thought there um with the driver so hopefully that helps operation baby drop one of my favorite programs very proud of it it's out there travisfoltongolf.com thought i'd give you a few things to think about as you go out and play golf this weekend i would say that this program applies to 75 percent of golfers 75 percent, maybe 80 something to think about. Thanks for being here. Great lineup coming up. Got some good guests coming up. Um, top teachers. Of course, Keith is back. He's on the road Tuesday. Uh, he'll be out in, in uh, Colorado. 
uh, for leg two of the FedEx Cup championship, and then he'll be live in Atlanta for the tour championship. So we got two more um, big shows coming up on Tuesday, and then I've got some cool guests coming up as well on Thursdays. But it was just me today, Operation Baby Drop. Hope you enjoyed.